February 2008 was an important moment in my life when I was forced to leave Afghanistan. I'd been serving as an officer in the British Army until my presence on the front line was leaked to the media. I could no longer stay with my soldiers, as it would have put them at greater risk. It was a decision over which I had no control. But the guilt of having to leave my guys behind was something that I was going to have to swallow. It was that flight home from Afghanistan which put me on the path to create the Invictus Games. While we sat waiting to board, the coffin of a Danish soldier was loaded onto the plane. Meanwhile, many of those who I was sat with were eagerly awaiting the journey home to their loved ones. For me, this represented the stark reality and contrast of war. Once in the air, I stuck my head through the curtain to see three British soldiers, really young lads, much younger than me at the time, laid out on stretchers and in induced comas, all three wrapped in plastic, missing limbs with tubes coming out of them everywhere. This visceral image was something that I'd never prepared myself for and only heard of. It struck me that this flight was just one of many, carrying home men and women whose lives would be changed forever, and some who had made the ultimate sacrifice. Four years later, I made it back to Afghanistan as an Apache helicopter pilot. Again, I was reminded of the human impact of conflict as I protected medical teams evacuating soldiers and civilians from the battlefield. On other occasions, I sat high above the ground at the controls of one of the world's most advanced helicopters and yet found that I was powerless to protect the men, women and children below from harm. On returning home, I began to look for ways in which I could support those veterans who had returned with injuries that, in previous years, simply would have been unsurvivable. And when I visited the Warrior Games in Colorado a year later, I knew what I had to do. Seeing so many men and women with similar injuries to those three young lads I'd seen on the plane five years before, competing against each other with huge, beaming smiles, made me realize how powerful this concept was. Sport is what made the difference. Sport can help these guys fix their lives and those around them. The Warrior Games was fantastic, but there were only a couple of hundred spectators. It seemed obvious to me that everyone, whether connected to the armed forces or not, would surely be inspired by their achievements. Moved by their fighting spirit and excited by the sporting competition unfolding before them. I left Colorado with a determination to take this to an international audience so more people could support and celebrate these amazing individuals. And that is exactly what we did when we held the first Invictus Games in 2014. We put on a show, a global event in the iconic venues of the London Olympics and attracted an audience of tens of thousands in the stands and many millions on television. We told the inspiring stories of the competitors who strive for Invictus glory against the odds. We created a platform which, uh, which helped to smash the stigma that existed around their injuries, particularly for those missing limbs, who showed that they weren't afraid to talk about their experiences. We showed that veterans didn't need our sympathy, just the opportunity to play a meaningful role in society once again. They showed us the strength of the human spirit. They showed us that despite huge adversity, the impossible was possible. The Invictus spirit was born, an unconquerable spirit of determination, camaraderie and service that I am incredibly proud to be part of.